Imagine four kings reward you with 100 gold coins each. For reference, that's about $2.2 million worth of gold. But you've been warned ahead of time by a court jester that some of the kings may be dishonest. They may have decided to shave off one gram of gold from each of the 100 gold coins that they're gonna give you. This could cost you a bunch of money, so obviously you're interested in figuring out which king is trying to hold out on you. If you can figure out which king is being dishonest, they'll make good on the full reward. But if you incorrectly accuse any of them, you get nothing. You do have a solar-powered digital scale, and you can weigh any of the king's gold, any of the number of coins, in any combination you want. But unfortunately, it's a cloudy day, and you only have enough juice for one single weighing. Is it possible to weigh the gold in such a way that you can figure out exactly which of the kings is being dishonest? Let's consider the simplest case first. What if there was actually just one king who had rewarded us with the hundred gold coins? Obviously, all we would have to do here is weigh all 100 coins and at a hundred grams per coin that should come up 10,000 grams. If it doesn't, if it comes up 9,900 grams instead, we know that the king has shaved off one gram from each of the hundred gold coins. But at this point you realize actually we don't need to weigh all 100 coins. If the king has shaved off the same gram from every single coin, we really only need to weigh one of the coins. If the display on the scale comes up a hundred grams, that means that none of the grams are missing, and we know that this king is being honest with us. On the other hand, if it comes up 99 grams, that means there is one gram missing, and that means that the king is being dishonest with us. So with just one king, it's pretty simple to figure out whether or not the king is being honest. Now let's see if we can figure out what to do if there are two kings. You might think, well, let's try roughly the same thing. Let's take one coin from the first king, and one coin from the second king, and we'll just weigh those two coins at the same time. If the scale displays 200 grams, once again, that means that there are zero missing grams, and this would mean that both of the kings are being honest. If, on the other hand, the scale weighs 198 grams, that means that two grams are missing, and so that means both of the kings must have been being dishonest. The problem is, what do we do if there is just one missing gram? What do we do if the scale weighs 199 grams? We know one of the two kings is being dishonest with us, but since we don't know which of the two coins is the one that's accounting for the missing weight, we don't know which king is being dishonest. We need to differentiate between the two kings somehow. So instead of weighing one coin from each of the kings, let's weigh one coin from the first king and two coins from the second king. Since we don't need to recalculate the total number of grams we're expecting each time, let's actually stop thinking about what the display reads and let's just think about how much gold is missing. Once again, if we weigh these three coins and they come up to 300 grams, that is, none of the gold is missing, we know that both of the kings are being honest with us. But now, if the scale shows us that we're missing just one gram of gold, the only thing that can account for that is the first king's one coin being one gram short. And so that would tell us that only the first king is being dishonest with us. Similarly, this time, if it's actually two grams that are missing, the only thing that can account for that are the second king's two coins. And so if we have two grams of gold missing, it must be the second king who's being dishonest with us. Of course, if we're missing three grams of gold now, we know that both of the kings are being dishonest with us, because that's one gram from the first king and two grams from the second king, and so they're both dishonest. It's tempting right now to think that's it. We've got our solution. For each additional king, just weigh one additional gold coin, and we'll be able to figure out which of the kings is being dishonest with us. But let's just make sure it actually works with three kings before we risk our $2.2 million. If we think about a scenario with a third king, where the first king, we're going to weigh one of his coins at the same time we weigh two coins from the second king and three coins from the third king, there are some scenarios where we know exactly who's being dishonest with us. Once again, if we find that there is no missing gold, for sure we can say that all three kings are being honest. Similarly, if we're missing six grams of gold right now, for sure the only way that can happen is if it's coming from all six of the coins that we're weighing. The first coin from the first king, the two coins from the second king, and the three coins from the third king. But imagine a scenario where the scale actually shows us we're missing 
three grams of gold. It could be that the first and second kings are the ones being dishonest, just like it was a moment ago when we were only weighing their gold. But this time it could just as easily be that the first two kings are being honest and only the third king is being dishonest. Because with the numbers we've chosen right now, there are missing weights that can be accounted for in multiple ways. That is, the missing weights right now are not uniquely describing any particular arrangement of kings. To make this work, we're going to adjust our numbers slightly. We're still going to weigh one coin from the first king and two coins from the second king, but we're actually going to weigh four coins now from the third king. You can see in this case, the only way to account for three missing grams of gold would be if the first two kings are the ones who are being dishonest. If instead it was the third king who was being dishonest, there wouldn't be three missing grams. Instead, there would have to be four missing grams. In fact, right now, we could literally list out every possible weighing of these seven gold coins and associate it with which which king is being honest and which king is being dishonest. If there's no missing gold at all, that means the first king was honest, the second king was honest, and the third king was honest. In this case, the zero missing gold represents their honesty. If on the other hand, one gram of gold was missing, that must mean the first king was being dishonest because he's the only king where we're weighing just one coin. But the second and the third kings must have been honest. For two missing grams, the only king who can account for that is the second king with the two coins of his that we weighed. And for four missing grams, the only king that can account for that is the third king. If we have some combination, for example, if we've got five grams missing, the only way that can work is if the first and third kings were being dishonest. And if we have six, the only way that can work is if the second and third kings were being dishonest. Finally, once again, of course, if all seven grams are missing, that must mean all three kings were being dishonest. With a little bit of rearranging here, you can tell that actually what's going on here is each possible missing amount of gold is associated with a number in the binary number system, in a number system that only uses the two symbols, zero and one, to represent value. Because in a number system, any given number is always represented uniquely by some series of symbols, digits in our base 10 number system, or bits in a base two number system, every possible display that comes up, every possible amount of missing gold is uniquely associated with only one particular arrangement of which king is being dishonest. This also tells us why four worked, but three didn't for the number of coins we're going to weigh from that third king. We have to be counting up by powers of two in the same way that in our decimal number system, each next place value is represented by a power of 10. This means for the fourth king, for our final solution, we need one coin from the first king, two coins from the second king, four coins from the third king, and eight coins from the fourth king. Given those number of coins, any amount of missing gold will be uniquely associated with some particular kings who are being dishonest with us. For example, if I find out that there are six missing grams of gold, again, the only way to account for those six missing grams is if both the second and third king are being dishonest, because two plus four is six, and that's the only possible way to make six using one, two, four, and eight gold coins. If, on the other hand, I'm missing something like 13 grams, the only way to make a 13 out of one, two, four, and eight gold coins is if the eight coins of the fourth king are all a little bit light, the four coins of the third king are a little bit light, and then the one coin of the first king is a little bit light. No other sets of coins can add up to those 13 missing grams. In this case, it's the power of a number system and its unique representation for values that lets us take just one single weighing and figure out exactly which kings are being dishonest with us. Here's a challenge for the viewer. Under these same conditions, 100 gold coins per king, dishonest kings shaving off one gram of gold per coin, what's the most number of kings who could reward us and that we could still figure out which of them is honest and which of them is dishonest. Comment down below with your answer. If you've enjoyed this video, please like the video, subscribe. I would love to have you stick around and otherwise I'll see y'all next time.